Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV in Coldwater, Michigan. Welcome back to the regular members of the RV Nerd Herd. Folks, you've been asking for it, you've been waiting for it, and they are finally doing it. Look at that. Four wheel, true trailing arm, off-road, independent suspension, what I'm going to call Max Series Embers. They are finally out there, finally here and available. Rolling out as uh, this is released across the nation, guys. So the reason I'm calling this the Max Series is because uh, as compared to the Overland, which is a seven and a half foot wide single axle, this is a quad wheel, full eight foot wide body. So it's a little bit bigger all the way around. But the thing is you're getting you can feel that extra space immediately, but you have so much more storage in these as compared to the common Overland series that calling it the Max just made sense to me. So this is the definition of roughing it smoothly. It's gonna work just as good inside of the parks as out because even if you're not gonna go off-roading, that suspension package is, that is not just hype. It rides and handles so, so nicely. And now you get the peace of mind of that having four wheels on the ground instead of two. We still have an all aluminum and composite body. It's like all Asdell and, and there's, there's not wood in the structure of this thing. It's something that theoretically uh, could be like generational. You may be able to hand this like down to your kids or something like that. It is zero to 100 in, uh, degree rated, hot cold camp rated, factory standard solar, advanced solar available, factory standard inverter, advanced inverter available. They go above and beyond in so many ways. And this I think is their very first model that has a non-Murphy bed that's just a straight 60 by 80 true queen walk around. It's almost everything I think everyone said they wanted in an Ember couples camper all wrapped up into one. So if you've seen my video of the 171 single axle Ember couples camper with sofa slide, this is basically that, just a little bit bigger in every way. One of the things that's not quite as obvious on these, and it actually took me a minute to notice, is that it's a full eight foot wide as opposed to seven and a half foot wide, uh, which is what you know your most of your single axle uh, embers are, except for the rock and roll, which are a funky little specialty kind of thing. It still has a 60 by 80 true queen bed, but this is not any kind of folding Murphy bed. This is now, this is one of the first models, I think the first model Ember has made, where it's just a full-time walk around 60 by 80 True Queen, which means the slide can close without interfering with it. And if you hang out with me for a little bit, I'll actually show you this thing in slide close road mode uh, as we go. Now, uh, up top here, you've got the uh, Stargazer skylight system above the bed, because a lot of embers are Murphy beds, and when the bed's up during the day, you would lose access to that, uh, you know, what a lot of RVs would use as a front windshield, although I know the perfect way to decorate that wall. And I have still not been able to get my wife to uh, agree with me on that one. I, I want to put that that beautiful masterpiece portrait right there, right above the sofa in our living room. But this thing right here, you can always enjoy the light. And this is one of those kind of Euro style windows that tilts open. You just got to make sure you lock it down before transit. But frankly, you got to make sure you do a lot of things before transit. So I don't really you know, pose that as a knock against them. Now on the Euro windows, a lot of people say, where's the bug screen? It's right there. Your day shade will function as a bug screen, but these also have a built-in nighttime shade. So if it is screaming hot out there, you don't uh, you know, have to worry about the sunshine baking you uh, half to death like you're a, a fly under a magnifying glass or anything like that. Um, you know, we are totally carpetless. We are easy cleaning. And what do you think about the decor? Um, it's on the, you know, neutral. It's, it's, it's brown tones, certainly. But it's like on the lighter side, the warmer side of neutral doesn't really bother me. You notice how you've got breeze across windows here? That is something that the single axle uh, Ember Overlands sometimes lack a little bit of. Now, I got to make a special note on the windows that we're looking at today. Um, Embers normally have those uh, dual pane Euro style windows through the entire RV. This one was actually uh, a, a custom build request by a, uh, a customer. Uh, yeah, custom by a customer. No, that makes sense. Okay. And they wanted to go with the frameless windows. But when you get the frameless windows on an ember, you might notice this little sticker says insulated window. These are the uh, dual pane windows right here. So no matter what, you're still getting some kind of dual pane window. The shades change though. When you get the Euro windows, you get the shades that I just showed you. When you get the frameless windows, you get these kind of pull down roller shades like we just saw right there. Now, when you take a seat on the uh, sofa on this one, if you're gonna spend some time inside, you are straight across from the entertainment center. And what's cool about this 
is that is all 12 volts. So that'll work off the grid if you want it to. And you might notice embers are doing something that I've been kind of asking about. And a lot of people have been saying, yeah, I think that's a good idea. They are not uh, outfitting their RVs with uh, traditional outside speakers. Instead, what they're doing there is that TV basically has a built-in sound bar. Then a lot of people, when they're going to go outside for uh, you know outdoor entertainment, they'll bring along something like a little portable Bluetooth speaker because you can charge it in the USB outlets like all over the place in this camper. Like even behind the sofa in the slide of this one, you see some extra USB plugs. There's plugs all over the place and. The, uh, the outlets that are not 12 volt powered USB plugs, they are all inverted because this RV has a factory standard thousand watt inverter. So no matter what plug you're looking at, um, basically you can power it uh, straight off the battery. Now that comes with the base version is a thousand watt inverter. That is not enough to kick over that microwave. That is not, uh, the, the microwave's optional, by the way. That's an interesting thing on embers. You don't even have to get them with a the microwave. But the standard inverter is also not enough to kick over the air conditioner. That is where the Ember Max solar package comes in, offering up to 570 watts of solar power, um, <laughs> as well as a 3,000 watt inverter charging system. It, it's, it totally changes the RV on a fundamental level. Now, this is some update info for you um, that is different from what you heard in the past. Ember has had such a high response and, and high number of requests for their Max Solars that Every uh, one of these is now built and prepped for Max Solar, so we can do some upfits uh, for you if you're so inclined. So we got a true queen bed, we got the sofa here, but um, you know what else we got? Well, if you got some guests, you see you got a little fold down sleeper sofa right there, and again behind that sofa, there's those big storage like lockers with some USB plugs in there storage all the way above the slide and all the cabinetry that we're looking at all the uh cabinet styles and rails are all a uh, a lumber core that's all pocket screwed together now one of the very interesting qualities on these is that even our interior wallboards like the partitions that define the bathroom those are asdell and i didn't even realize that until i went through and recorded an ember factory video tour and in fact, I might leave you a link to that and things like the Max Solar Package in the video description if you'd like to learn more about those, uh, you know, extra detail packages right there. So uh, again, the the only wood in the RV is is just what you're looking at um, in the cabinetry, just to give it uh, a little bit of you know character and warmth, as it were. It is a uh, it is a product that um, you know the the structure is composite, the structure is aluminum. Uh, you know, I'm not saying you want to just like never maintain the RV and it's permanently waterproof, but it's going to take a lot to actually screw one of these up. That's one of the cool things about these. This also, if you notice under the refrigerator, it was just wide open storage. That is something that was based off your feedback on these videos. Like the 171 Ember actually has, uh, a, uh, a standard little mini camp kitchen down there. Well, a lot of people said, can't I just get the storage? And Ember said, you know what? We can, and we can even leave that door there so it can pass through from the inside to the outside. And for me, that is an ideal place for a wastebasket um, because you know having access to a trash can on the outside of the RV is very, very handy. Now, I've been floating around this bed for too long. I realize this, I'm yakety yakking, but did you notice behind those hanging wardrobe towers, there's a household and USB outlets with your own little amber glow reading lights now up here above the bed this is kind of cool you got like your own little tanning booth now the camera's absolutely freaking out right now um because the camera's trying to figure out what's going on with the light but the fact is uh you can just turn that off or on or you can adjust the light you know to a nice little glow and it doesn't flicker like that in real life it's flickering like that only on camera but the little amber lighting back here, you'll find that also next to the entry door and in the bathroom. So it gives you some awesome nighttime navigation. And compared to the 171 Little Brother, this 201 Big Brother, notice how like every corner has storage. They packed all the storage in this thing they possibly could because they knew that the 171 single axle was admittedly a little bit lacking on storage capacity. So they wanted to make sure they made up for that here. Now, a couple details before we hit the bathroom, full privacy shade in a full viewing window. Did you notice these handy little magnetic Mervin shelves back there? That way they can flip up out of the way if you wanna create like a broom closet or something. 
And notice how they did not put outlets under the overhead cabinets where your appliances can't reach them. Again, your feedback based on these videos, they added an extra set of outlets over there where there didn't used to be any so that you could have a nice little easy appliance station. I love how they're listening. I love how they're evolving. I love how they're, they just, they're just continuing to get better and better over here. And you want to know something else kind of cool and kind of crazy? All of the lighting that we're looking at right now, all the 12 volt function that's going on is being live powered by the sun outside. I do not have a battery hooked up to this RV currently. Everything you're seeing, all the operation of this RV is currently just, you know, on the house, thanks to mother nature effectively. Although, I mean, I don't know if it's on the house, truly. I mean, in, in truth, you're, you're, you're paying for it. <laughs> now with this being eight foot wide instead of seven and a half, you saw there was some extra room around that toilet. Um, the shower headroom here, uh, if you're tall like me, against the sidewall, it's a little short, but in the skylight, it's going to work. Now, a quick little note on that. This RV, the very back wall, it's six and a half foot tall. But if you get in it in person, I'm going to bring you back out of the bathroom for just a minute. Watch the ceiling line above the slide out right here from left to right. This isn't a camera trick. It is actually ramping up and getting taller until you get up here to the bedroom. This has a north-south swept roof as opposed to an east-west. Now, here's an interesting thing. The sidewalls are an inch and a half. They're all composite. The roof is literally the same thing, except it's three inches thick. That is serious up there, guys. Now, not only that, but when the sun is directly beating down on you, that's a pretty hard thermal barrier between you and the outside. And remember, your windows are a standard dual pane, which isn't a massive shift for your R values, but anything helps instead of nothing, you know? You've got the bigger XL vent fans standard in these things. The roof is prepped uh, also in case you want to uh, add a little vent cover to that. What do you think of the shower enclosure? They swapped that originally as uh, when they ran into a shortage, but a lot of people are like, ooh, I love that. So they just kept it. I think it's really sharp, but that's my two cents. What is yours? Since this might be something where you might be off the pavement, having that Aquaview shower miser there is a handy thing. And if you're not familiar with that, um, for your water system, I call that the Maxwell House good till the last drop thing. What it will do is while you're waiting for your shower water to heat up, it will help you avoid wasting any fresh water um, that you know you're, you're pumping out of your fresh tank and just into the gray tank while you're waiting for your water to warm up. Also, no little gappy gap up here. I know some people really dislike that. And there, if you scroll back in the video, you may notice there's no big gappy gap at the bottom of the door as well. That means that they have to be hanging that door uh, a little bit better, a little bit more consistently. And as far as traveling access goes with the slide closed, I just, I don't know how they could have been more successful. Not only can you still use the full 60 by 80 True Queen with the slide closed, but you can still, you know, walk around it. There's, you really don't even have to like climb around it or anything like that. There's still plenty of walking space here. You can get to all of your kitchen storage. Um, you know, all, like this little angled pantry over here, the way that these uh, doors open this direction, you can still access everything very easily. And speaking of storage, I realized that in the bathroom, I forgot to like actually open the medicine cabinet here to show you how, uh, you know, big and deep that is. But the fact is, I mean, there's just awesome traveling access to the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom, the everything in this. Um, it's uh, the only thing it's good for at a travel stop is everything. Now, I want to give you just a good quick look at her right here, but I think I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't first zero right in on the whole reason this RV even exists. The fact that you folks requested, said, hey, you know, we like Ember, but uh, can't they do something with more than just two wheels on the ground? You know, that your, your request and your feedback is the exact reason this has been produced right here. So these are the newer, bigger, longer Embers. Again, I kind of call it the Max series, but that's an unofficial RV nerdism, as it were. Although, how cool would it be if Ember actually adopted that nomenclature? <laughs> anyway, um, we have four-wheel independent off-road trailing arm suspension here on a Goodyear Wrangler 
tires. Com Wrangler? I don't know why I stressed it like that. That's weird. Anyway, factory standard TPMS, and that actually talks to the uh, in command, um, not in command, yeah, in command smart uh, control system on this. Your little, uh, you know, control switch panel on the inside of the RV, you can get an app to control that there, and your TPMS basically talks to it. You see how it's not a leaf spring or anything? You see those really aggressive shocks and whatnot. This is going to be one of the best handling, best riding RVs you've ever had. Like I said, you don't even have to be an off-road enthusiast. If you just want something that's going to ride and handle nice, this could work for you. You got the little propane cooker hooker coming off the side here. We got ourselves a built-in stinky slinky uh, solution right there, so you don't got to mix all that in with your uh, holding or your uh, cargo stuff. Then, <laughs> speaking of holding tanks, now that I'm down here, the underbelly is enclosed. It has a radiant barrier. You have a uh, 12 volt tank heaters standard on these and every single ember has been tested and proven in Truma's temperature chambers to be zero to 100 degree capable. They are making sure that these are outfitted with a very capable weather package. Whether you're gonna go hot camping or cold camping or maybe just some spring and fall camping in between, this is going to take care of you. Now, um, let's jump our way up here. Notice they do something a little bit different with their baggage door. It drops down like drawbridge style, although some quick release uh, kind of carabiners, or is it carabiner or carabiner? Somebody leave me a con I, I I never, like I read it and I don't know which way it is. Anyway, I, uh, we call it Pirates of the Caribbean, but it should maybe be Caribbean, but I don't think those are Caribbeaners or anything. I don't know why I'm deciding to get into a language lesson on this. Solar charge controller over here. Um, that is an MPPT 30 amp go power charge controller. You can monitor that via Bluetooth if you want to. But um, when you go to the uh, Max Solar package, that will actually completely change. But notice we have a full pass through up front here. Now jumping over to the other side of that pass through, actually back on the driver's side here, you see how we have almost like a fifth wheel style Nautilus kind of docking center. Notice how our gate pull valves here, they're inside the RV, they're enclosed, they're protected from, you know, harsh weather exposure. This is an all uh, where, where there's any sort of water potential, it's galvanized rolled steel. And you notice how no matter what, whether you get the base solar with 190 watts like we're looking at today, or the max solar with 570 watts of power, you're still going to maintain a portable prep uh, plug there for, uh, you know, if you want to park in the shade and kind of chase the sun with a little loose panel. Up front here, we got the uh, the gearbox. One of the questions, by, by the way, real quick, I'm sorry. This is the battery side over here. You see where those plugs are. Remember, all the power that we're using today, all the lights that we saw, it was compliments of Mother Nature. That's my battery box on the ground right in front of that Sprinter's tongue jack over there. I was not using any of my juice. This was all free action today, basically. Um, the, uh, if you go max solar, those wires won't be there because your batteries will actually be located and, and a lot of your solar hardware will be located um, under the uh, the bed where that big storage tub was basically. That's That whole space would be occupied. You see we've got our uh, 40 pounds of propane over here with auto changeover regulator. Um, now the gearbox, some folks have expressed some concerns wondering, you know, because embers are heavy, they tow nicely, but they are a little bit tongue heavy. Um, they are weight distribution system compatible. The very first ones that came out, we had a little bit of a hiccup with them. We reported that to Ember and they, uh, you see the little spacer blocks below the gearbox. They added those to make sure that you could properly tow these things safely and comfortably. Um, if you got some eagle eyes, you may have noticed, I think one of the, it's the original thing Ember wanted to do. Uh, but they just never had the chance. They're using a new style of uh, stabilizer jack right here. Um, basically, and they'll start using these on their single axles, quick drop stabilizers, what these are. Basically, it can just drop down uh, uh, a lot faster and easier, and it comes with its own stability arm to lock it in place. So that, uh, you know, especially an RV like this, you know, you're not always going to be camping on a concrete pad. If you're going to be where the ground is kind of funky and unlevel, it's nice to be able to cinch this thing down and avoid a lot of that extra herky-jerky rock and roll. You can do that with this. I mean, I like some rock and roll myself, but not out of my RV. I get motion sick. <laughs> now over here, instead of that little mini camp kitchenette, folks said, you know what? We just want the storage space. And just to give you a size reference, I threw that little TPMS box in there and you can see how big this is. I would love to put, like I said, uh, an inside outside wastebasket in there. Now, 
remember that uh, garden sprayer blue coily hose thing we saw in the, the docking center? You can also hook that up over here for just cold water cleanup, or you can, uh, you know, spray down your campsite a little bit or something like that. And then look at this, just like the single axles. This, uh, basically, they, they have a built-in wheel chuck system. But what's cool, if you wanted to, instead of this little pin, you could use a padlock, and you could effectively, you know, turn that into your own security system on your RV, which I think is pretty cool. The stable steps here are standard on these. Um, notice how they have an exceptionally long leg. Um, that is intentional because, again, if you're on a really funky campsite that does not have even ground, uh, you're going to want the uh, extra adjustment potential on those. And <laughs> couldn't have segued that any better. Speaking of adjustment, the telescopic ladder on the back here. You know, you can have it um, not sticking out quite so far. It can actually extend out further if you want an even smoother angle of attack. You can have it a little bit more vertically, and it folds down and stores under that bed very, very nicely. Not in that storage trunk, but where I had that uh, uh, removable table stored under the bed, it will fit under there perfectly. That ladder is not standard, though. That is an optional piece of equipment, so kind of keep that in mind. And again, this is a full eight foot wide body now. This is a, the, the what I'm calling the Max series. Everything's just a little bit bigger, but all the construction's the same. All they did was make it longer and add an extra set of wheels, which is kind of cool. We are still prepped and ready, not only for a rear view camera, but also side view cameras. And down below, we still maintain a 300, uh, I almost said 300 watt. I've been talking so much solar. Yeah, it's a 300 watt uh, solar hitch. I'm an idiot. It's a 300 pound rated accessory hitch. So you see where that ladder's located? One of the cool things, you don't gotta put it there. Because these actually come with two different ladder mounting positions, which is kind of neat. So, uh, you know, depending on what you're doing, depending on, uh, uh, although I'm looking at that, apparently I didn't get that slotted in place. So that's on me, that's not on them. I was just doing a quick little setup demo. And once again, quick housekeeping note, what we're looking at here are the optional dual pane frameless windows. Uh, normally, uh, again, Embers would be outfitted with the, uh, what is it, Lexan, but the, the dual pane kind of Euro windows that pop out and have that, uh, that day night shade. That um, stargazer skylight right there above the front of the RV, that is the type of windows that you would normally always find on this. So even when you get the dual pane option, you still uh, always have that Euro dual pane uh, skylight up there up top. Was that clear? I don't know. Sometimes I, I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. Now on the inside, I mentioned how the roof is just a wall, except it's double thick. Now remember, it is swept from front to back, so it does have some water runoff. You see how these are outfitted with a low profile air conditioner? It just helps keep the overall clearance down, which you know helps prevent you from popping that sucker off like a Lego brick with there's a low hanging tree branch. What we're looking at today again is the base solar package with 190 watt standard solar and 1000 watt inverter. There's also getting that far more advanced Ember Max solar package that a lot of people have been enjoying. But like I said, we're basically walking on a wall, but it's extra thick. If you get down here and you look at it real close, that's a fiberglass skinned roof. It does not have any sort of rubberized or TPO membrane that requires upkeep. Now you still have seals. I'm not telling you this is a zero upkeep RV, but it is a far less upkeep required kind of RV. And you see that exoskeleton, that metal, just like cinching all the way around the RV. That's a powder coated aluminum. So that's, uh, even if it gets scratched up by a tree branch, it's not just gonna rot out. Technically there's processes like oxidation that are possible, but with the proper cleaners you use on an RV, that really shouldn't be a problem. And that telescoping removable optional ladder that we talked about, the fact that it sticks up above the roof line and gives you something to hold on to, that's a win in my book every day. And once again, a uh, big thank you to the returning members of the RV Nerd Herd. If you remember, when I had a chance to record the original prototype of this thing, there's already been some changes, some little tweaks and advancements. I love, Ember is just, they're evolving at a fast rate on the fly and they just continue to get better. So. On that note, 
they are paying attention to the comments in these videos, obviously. They are listening to you folks and they're trying to give you what you want. So let them know. Let them know what you like. Let them know what you would change given the opportunity. And if you appreciate the fair way that we go through these things and show you the good with the bad with everything in between, make sure you hit that subscribe button and catch us on the next one. I'll leave you links in the video description to check for pricing and availability. Although at the time this is first rolling out, there are not a lot of these available. I prioritize this one big time. So uh, if you don't see what you're looking for, give us a call. What our folks can get you a quote if we're sold out we can get you a figure on that uh, if you're looking for one with or without max solar uh, call our team we can help you locate something or get one built or find you one like this with the base package and do the upfit whatever you're looking for we can do it and we do all that without hidden dealer fees you're welcome <laughs> as maui would say from the moana movie you know now i gotta go watch that i heard that song the other day and now i got the rock singing you know what can i say except you're welcome stuck in my head and i just went way off script <laughs> thank you for continuing to watch and put up with me appreciate you guys so much look forward to seeing you the next time um and they do in case you're curious you're thinking yeah but what about something for families they have a murphy bed double over double cargo bunk model coming out next i can't wait to get my hands on it as soon as i do you're gonna see it so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone